All right, everyone, welcome to part two of this. If you um, didn't listen to last week's episode where Navreen and I talk about the first four myths around power and control and domestic violence, please hit pause on this video and go ahead and listen to that one. Same triggers as last week's video apply to today's video. So please take care of yourself. If you need to step away from this, please do so. We want you to look after yourself as you navigate Um Engage in learning. Okay. All right. So let's get into it, Noreen. Um, last time we talked about four myths and we have four more to get through today. So last time we talked about the myths that we talked about were only men from lower socioeconomic status are controlling. Myth number two, that only those who are uneducated engage in control and abuse. Myth number three, that only weak women put up with abuse and control slash why don't women leave. And um fourth that we kind of touched on a little bit but I want us to kind of elaborate more of that today which is that it doesn't happen that much anymore so why don't we start with that one it doesn't happen that much anymore um can we can you elaborate on that myth there are a lot of factors which back up this fact in both positive and negative uh manner that Number one, it's highly underreported. Yeah. Fear of stigma. I think we just talked about that in the last clip. Um, fear, stigma, societal pressure. So it, it's underreported. Number two is just the fear comes into play even if it gets reported. There are women who would be bruised, bleeding, walking up to the prosecutor walking up to the lawyer or police saying, oh, please take the charges off. I was just asking for help. I don't want you to charge my husband or my partner. Mm -hmm. So that's how it just implies that it doesn't happen anymore because it's the oppressed itself who's taking the things back, the victim itself not trying to report it. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy to report. I'm not calling out anyone. That's another story. <clears throat> it's not around that it doesn't happen anymore. It's just highly underreported. Yeah, it's highly underreported. It's well hidden. And, you know, with this myth, I really think about how um, a lot of people make this mistake of taking their opinion and generalizing it as a fact. Right. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion, but not everyone is entitled to their own fact. There's only one fact. Right. So I think for someone who maybe has had the privilege of not knowing anyone um, who has been through power and control will say, well, it doesn't happen just because they haven't seen it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. It still exists. It's that they haven't been exposed to it or they have. And maybe it was just really well concealed. But that convolution of opinion and fact is I think it's really relevant here yeah indeed it is and again taking it to the brown context family pressure comes into play saying it's something about family we can keep it in family and talk about it yeah no one talks about it that's again another story but they'll pressurize um the oppressed or victim to keep it within themselves and not bring shame to the family by talking about this loudly or openly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if if you think about it, how would you know that it's happening or not happening? You don't live in the home with this couple, right? Yeah. People become very good at hiding things that are going on for them in their personal lives. Like if it's not physical abuse, say we're talking about psychological, emotional, verbal abuse, how would you know? How would you know it's happening or not happening? Um, because it's maybe not, not happening in front of you, or maybe if it is happening in front of you, you kind of chalk it up to be like, oh, banter between the two. But I think with this myth, we also need to realize that things are more than what they seem. And if we take everything at face value and draw generalized conclusions from those that's not an accurate picture of what's going on. Yeah. And the victim is often told, keep your face straight, you know? I don't want to see this face of you. 
So the, again, the abuser is conditioning them into having this certain set of facial expressions that doesn't show anything. You know, we can still figure out stuff from someone's facial expressions if they're distressed or upset, but again, the abuser is going to condition. Mm -hmm. Don't take this face out with me. Mm -hmm. Again, some of the statements. Absolutely. My parents are going to be outside. Mm -hmm. Keep your face straight. Right. Keep your expression neutral. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't be dramatic. Don't be dramatic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Be and then again, couples fight. There was just a, just an argument. Why are you making a big deal out of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The gaslighting. Absolutely. The gaslighting. So it just, I think all of the factors go hand in hand manipulating the victim so much that they end up not reporting it absolutely yeah. yeah perfect thanks for that so the next myth that we have is women are just as abusive as men and i can already like i had to include this one because i can already like see and picture people typing in the comments and saying well women are also abusive so let's talk about this one yeah is this myth, is this myth or is this fact women are as abusive as men I don't want to say as abusive, but while men and women both can express domestic violence and power and control behaviors, women are um, disproportionately more affected than men. That's why we, um, when we started this, I, ha I said I'm going to use the generalizations because I'm going to ta talk according to the stats that who's generally the victim and who's generally the abuser. So Statistics Canada again show that women are more likely to experience severe forms of abuse, which include physical and sexual assault. And it also says that one in every three women experience abuse and one in every four men experience abuse. Mm. And one in every men, four men, sorry, one in every four men experience abuse at the hands of a woman? Yes, mm. their partners. Their partners, their female partners. Okay. But talking more about this is in terms of one in every three women, they're experiencing 70% of them are experiencing physical, sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. And for men, what men are experiencing, what's one out of four men are experiencing, that's more around psychological abuse. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would you say that might include for them? Like, Criticism, name calling, things like that. Criticism, name calling, finance, financial controlling, and gaslighting. All right. Okay. Hmm. I am surprised to hear that statistic. I wonder, and you know, I, I don't expect you to know this off the top of your head, but I wonder if there's any differences because we're talking about heterosexual relationships, right? Like cisgendered heterosexual relationships. I wonder if um, things with power and control look different in same sex uh, or transgender relationships. It's so sad that there's not a lot of research available. Yeah, we need more stats on something like this. We need more stats. Yeah, we need more reporting to begin with. Yeah, we can't have stats until there, there's reporting, you know, absolutely. There's not enough reporting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think for the longest time, um, when we we're talking about s people who are in same sex relationship, they were not openly able to come out. So the fact about reporting something around violence was a far, far, far thought they could ever get. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you, it requires so much more of you to like come out and say, right, that you're in a same sex relationship, if that's something you haven't done already. And then yeah. that attached to that, just like the burdens of reporting that we've talked about, there's so many, that can seem like a really, really tall order. Yeah. And I wonder even how like the authorities, like law and police would take it, you know, would they even recognize it? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But thank you for shedding some light on that myth. Um, next up, we have 
men are men who abuse women are mentally unwell this is something that i've again like heard a lot i think this is similar to the uneducated one that we talked about in the last episode right these men are just uneducated like what do they know but this is another really common one men who abuse women are mentally unwell i think again um generalizations but let's let's break it here again mentally unwell means having some kind of mental disorder Mm -hmm. and i would say yes mental disorder can feel as a stressor or become a stressor or it can be a factor in terms of uh, being a domestically abusive person 100 percent. but it doesn't mean that everyone who's being domestically abusive is mentally unwell Mm -hmm. yeah these are people who who hold high posts these are people who are renowned in society for doing nice work they are stable people having stable relationships outside of their relationship with their partner yeah that that's most of it yeah for sure yeah like how you said that um sure having a diagnosed mental illness can be an additional stressor that can affect how people regulate their anger but that doesn't mean that every abusive man is mentally unwell yeah yeah those are two very separate things i'm not going to name anything here but if if we look up we see a lot of um celebrities who who get called upon due to they get called upon for domestic violence they were holding high ranks they were holding high positions they were still being abusive so the fact of being mentally unwell breaks there what you said earlier last time about uh, we're making excuses right we have there's some we live in a larger patriarchal society we all know this this is not up for debate it's a fact especially the larger south asian culture it is a very patriarchal society and so as a result of that we have this um we make a lot of allowances for boys and men we inherently have a hard time holding them accountable and so we're looking for ways to be compassionate with them and for practice forgiveness with them um when actually there needs to be a lot more accountability yeah male privilege absolutely in brown households absolutely it exists oh it is very prevalent yeah yeah then in that same breath the second last myth that we have is women often lie about abuse i think we've touched um some bits about it they they do lie 100 percent. they have to i always um when i'm having a conversation with someone i i usually bring this phase phrase walk one mile in her shoe and you would understand why she lies mm-hmm. yeah so the lie about the abuse is happening to them not to them yeah not lying that abuse happened when it didn't happen not falsely yeah. accusing someone because i think yeah. there is such a narrative around that right that oh she wants attention so she is she wants attention yeah and i think especially with brown folks when um things were more uh, they're more appreciated if they're talked in family and they don't go out so with with the freedom around being able to call 911 when something like this happens it was more around work on your relationship in the family, with the family, with family members, rather than going out. That's when the lying piece comes out. Mm -hmm. The lying thing came out when a lot of women would say, oh, I just lied, I wanna take my charges back. Mm. But it was the pressure, no one saw the, um, there's a lot of intersectionalities here, you know? Absolutely, and if a woman who does leave, you can already, you already know that the man's family is going to say, especially if they're brown, that, oh, she's lying. She's exaggerating. It's going to protect their own reputation, right? Exactly. I saw this. Um, I'm forgetting who. So I, I want to say this because this is not my metaphor. I want to give credit where it's due, but I'm forgetting who spoke about it. I will link it down below if I find it. But reading about domestic violence, uh, someone once talked about it in the context of 
people burning down their own homes. So this person, I, th- I believe, was a man who was conducting a lot of awareness for men around domestic violence. And he said, when somebody's house burns down, do you, the, is the first thought that comes to your mind uh, is, oh, yeah, they burned their own house down for insurance money. No, that's not what you think about. You say, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Are there people who burn down their own homes for insurance money? Sure. Is that what? probable and is that what's happening most of the time no so why do when women say they've been abused the first thought that comes into our mind is that she's lying or she's exaggerating that is the testament actually to how deeply we hold some of these like sexist and um uh deeply feminist yeah sexist and anti-feminist um opinions and values in our society yeah, that's. I thought that was a great metaphor, right? And I think um, it's something I've kind of shared with people in my personal life as well. But I think even just yeah, saying that women are lying, it's it's. it's I think about very your similar to it is the values. same thing. Um, why does a woman leave? Why not? Your first thought is why did he hit him? Hit her? Yeah, absolutely. Why is he hitting her? Yeah. Or why is he being abusive? Yeah. Why do we always put it to the women? Why doesn't she leave? Yeah. Why is she the one who has to pick up everything, herself, her children, everything, and go find a new life? When she was not the one at fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what usually comes after that is the excuses then, right? Or them brushing them off. Well, he's stupid anyway. He doesn't know what he's doing. She should know better and leave yeah. or he's uneducated or he's mentally unwell and that's where those excuses come in yeah yeah and our last myth for today is women are more likely to be attacked by strangers so you know I think this um when I was thinking of this one this really comes from what a lot of brown women are taught that don't go out late don't stay out late don't uh, hang out with boys because I think there is this commonly held belief that women are at risk from strangers I think I I, I shouldn't say I think but it was the stats I visited and read and researched looked up women are likely to be more stabbed, stalked, sexually abused than men, Mm -hmm. than predators. You mean by people in their personal life? Yes and no. Both. Okay. It's more around, it's usually the, the trend that I looked up or I saw somewhere down the line when we say they were attacked by strangers, the stranger links down to some of the personal, like personal people they know. Hmm. Taking it as an example, a woman said, no, I don't want to date you. I don't want to be with you. Hits a man, ego. He wants to um, take his revenge or have vengeance with the woman, attack her, stalk her online or in-person stalking you know both happen highly so what i'm yeah hearing you say that men uh, women are not more likely to be attacked by strangers they're more likely a danger from the men that they already know and have in their lives yes yeah absolutely there is statistic around this Um, okay so according to statistics canada we have Some gender differences in police reported violent crime. So female victims of physical physical assault are more often victimized by their spouse or partner. But men were more often assaulted by someone who didn't, wasn't known to them, uh, like a stranger. Um, So that makes sense. So stats say that women are more often victims of abuse by someone that they know, partner, ex-boyfriend, ex-husband. Um, colleague, right? How many stories have we heard of women in India having acid thrown on them because they turned down their boyfriend's marriage proposal? Many, many, and many, 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 many. Exactly, exactly. So, those were some of the myths that we wanted to bust today. Again, 
Uh, today's episode was a continuation continuation of the last one. If you haven't listened to that, go listen to it and let us know what you know you thought about this. So if you're watching here on YouTube, you have the comment section down below for your thoughts. And if you are on Spotify or any other podcasting platform, there will be a Q&A link for you down below as well. Let us know your thoughts. If you have any other myths that you've heard that you want us to bust, let us know. I would be happy to invite Navreen again for another chat about this. And thanks so much for joining me today, Navreen. It was, it was nice. It was really nice kind of getting into this with you. And I know we've only scratched the surface and this is a very nuanced topic, but it was lovely talking to you. Thank you so much, Nikita. It was lovely connecting and being able to share my two cents. Yeah, absolutely. If you want to get in touch with Navreen, I will have all of her uh, links down below. Yeah. Um, she is based in a BC in Canada. So that is her jurisdiction. If you are from BC, I believe a lot of our listeners are. Hello. Uh, check her out if you want to connect with her and stay tuned for our disclaimer. The guest and the host of Brown People Problems do not offer individualized therapeutic or medical advice and our conversations should not be interpreted as such. This podcast is not a replacement for therapy. This podcast exists for educational purposes only. Please consider your circumstances and engage with the content mindfully.